Hello, welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. Here we are on another hot, sticky, horrible evening in the greenhouse. It's about eight o'clock and it is super hot and sweaty. It's flipping horrible, okay? But I thought I'd take this opportunity to show off how some of my Nepenthes have been coming along. Now, some of them are, are quite new additions to the greenhouse, so we're gonna have a look at those as well and see how they've been coping. And some of them have got massive. I've got to do some, up, uh, some, some repotting quite soon, which is not a job I particularly like with Nepenthes, especially when they sort of have outgrown the pot that they're growing in, like this fella, because what you want to do is try and sort of get them upright like this without breaking them and the pots and the pitchers and everything sort of like just flopping around and it freaks me out because uh, it's very easy to sort of break stuff when they're this sort of size and uh, I know I've got to do it but it's not something I'm necessarily going to enjoy so we'll pop him down and uh, we'll pick him up uh, pick up some of these plants and have a look at them one by one now some orchids are doing a lot and some nepenthes are doing a lot better than others because it is hot so things like nepenthes um aristolacordes have just gone like that they sort of go into stasis because it's, it's it's warmer than they'd like and they basically go you know what sod it i'm not going to be doing any growing until the temperatures drops um so yeah we'll have a look at that now Right in front of you, this is my main Nepenthes growing area. So most of them chill out on this bench in this little square section. I don't have a great deal of them. I've got one massive Nepenthes ventrata, which I've basically banished over to the corner. You live down there and that's where you stay. You're too big. I'm going to have to do something with that. I'm thinking of doing some stem cuttings because it's just disproportionately massive and it's a hybrid. I've got nothing against it, but it's a freak. I only like species. Well, I, that's, that's not true. Look, guys, I'm not a snob. I, I, I try not to, not to be a snob. I've got lots of hybrid orchids, um, and I've... No, I don't, I don't have any hybrid Nepenthes at all. <laughs> that was going to be a rant. I don't have any hybrid Nepenthes. Most of you will know by now, especially those of you who have been with the, with the channel for a long time, I like species. I like things that actually exist. I find it more of a challenge to grow them. Um, and I, I like the fact that they exist in the world. I think that's so much more interesting. There's nothing wrong with hybrids. Hybrids, you, get, you can breed the best characteristics of both parent plants into one super amazing plant. And they tend to be more vigorous and they tend to be faster growing, um, which is great. But there's something about knowing that it exists somewhere else you know it grows wild in, in, in its natural habitat and here i have I'm, I'm creating a little slice of that habitat for it in the greenhouse i find that more interesting so i've got nothing against mr nepenthes ventrata but he's just too big he's just too big so we're going to try taking off oliver's greenhouse is going to try its first ever nepenthes stem cuttings and we'll do that together obviously because well it's perfect content isn't it okay so the first plant we're going to be having a good look at, okay, is my Nepenthes fusca. Now this thing is quite a common uh, Nepenthes, but it's produced some absolutely, what are for me, some absolutely monstrous pitches. These guys have got really big. I mean, they've got to be 25 centimetres, maybe, yeah, 25 centimetres tall. This one's maybe pushing 30. They're really big, but it's starting to do that weird thing where it's sort of like, uh, uh, falling out of its pot. I'm going to have to find a way of sort of erecting it again. Uh, and I think I'm going to put it into one of my hanging pots because the idea is basically to, well, I don't know, I might put a pole out actually. I'm not sure what to do with it. I'm not sure whether to turn it into a hanging pot for the meantime and grow it like that for a little bit longer or to start getting it orientated closer towards the ground because what I'd really like to do with these guys is get them to grow up the inside of the greenhouse. Like on Brad, Brad's greenhouse, he's the most amazing collection of Nepenthes. It is ridiculous. God knows how much it must have cost him. A lot, I'd imagine, but I love the way they climb all over the inside of the greenhouse. It's going to make insulation a real issue. We're going to have to think about that. But some of these uh, are ones I definitely want to vine around the greenhouse because they'll just look amazing. And then that way we'll get really distinct lower and upper pitches, which is, well, that's why we've grown the Penthes, really, isn't it? They've got that morphological variation. It's just so unique in the plant world. So uh, I'll get this guy out. We'll put it up there and we'll have a look. Okay, so here she is. There's a sense of scale next to my hand. It's getting pretty big. Nice big new leaf jump coming up here. This guy doesn't seem to be particularly um, phased by the increasing temperature, but it's starting to do like a weird dog leg. See that sort of like bent bit of stem there? That's because it's falling over. And obviously being uh, uh, geo positively geotropic, it's trying to grow up against gravity. So 
I've got to, it's going to look weird otherwise. So it's, something's got to change. I have to do something. But it's producing some absolutely stonking pictures. Look at this guy. It's an absolute beauty. Lovely patterning. Uh, lovely peristome sort of uh, form and, and colour. This guy here is just open, so the peristome hasn't darkened yet. So it's got a sort of a much lighter colour. But yeah, really nice plant. Absolute beauty. Due for repotting though. Another one of my Nepenthes that's just got massive. This is a Nepenthes tobica. Uh, it's from like Lake Toba, which is where it gets that name, tobica. And it is producing some very, very attractive pictures. They're stunning, really, really pretty, but very, very sort of squat uh, form. Um, they're sort of like almost like bottle shaped. Very pretty though. If we zoom in, you'll be able to see a bit more of the the detail and the colour of the actual pictures. They're these lovely sort of speckling, but they sort of remain beautifully lime green. Beautiful plant. That guy's getting massive as well. I'm sure it's probably due a repot quite soon. Um, as far as the heat. Hasn't slowed down at all. Another beautiful plant which is coming on really, really well. This came from Tom's Carnivores, I think. No. No, this came from Scott Carnivorous Plants, I think. It did uh, from up in Scotland. And it is producing some very, very attractive little pictures on it. And it's got this sort of like deep red colour. Nice big leaf jumps. Hasn't really slowed down as a result of the heat at all in the slightest. Um, it's kept most of the pictures that were, that were on it when I received it, and uh, they are beautiful. It's very similar in appearance to the Nepenthes Fusca, I think. But it's certainly got, apart from the peristome, it's got very similar markings on the outside. But if I can turn it around without snapping it off, and we zoom in, you'll be able to see... Oh, that is zoomed in, Oliver. It's got a much thinner peristome. Very pretty plant. Very pretty plant. This plant right in front of you is Nepenthes jacquelinii. Some bloke found it named after his wife. I'm assuming she was called Jacqueline. Makes sense. And it's doing what it does every single year. Uh, when the temperature gets hot, it stops picturing. It's gone into stasis. Got some decent sized leaves on it. Uh, this is going to be a new picture. Hopefully you can see that. That is inflating. It hasn't gone black and died off. But the pictures that were on it have all carked it. They've all disappeared. So um, that's the end of those guys. But hates the heat um, but does continue growing which is quite nice <laughs> as previously discussed this is nepenthes aristolacoides and you can tell it hates the heat because it goes big leaf jump big leaf big leaf big leaf small leaf smaller leaf hate self so yeah really really hates um the, the higher temperatures uh, i've upgraded the shea cloth to to cover more of this plant um it was a tiny speck when I brought it, like the most pathetic sized Nepenthes you've ever seen in your life. Since then it has taken off and it's grown a lot, uh, but this reduction in leaf size is a prime example of a Nepenthes which is struggling from heat stress. Heat stress will need to be potting, one or the other, so you're gonna, you know it's going to be one of the two. This is Nepenthes to, uh, truncata. Um, it's supposed to be a highland form, so it produces very large pictures with wide wavy peristome. Thanks, Matt. For, so this came from Hamps, uh, Hampshire Carnivorous Plants. Uh, it sort of came with that picture there. Uh, then it produced this picture over here, which is getting a bit more like it. And then since then, it's done an enormous leaf jump. If I turn it this way, you're able to see. And it's really taken off. That's probably in response to the heat. It may be a highland form. It may tolerate lower temperatures, but it's known for being a warm growing uh, lowland. Uh, Nepenthes. So yeah, nice big leaves. Here's a very cute little Nepenthes and certainly I think a must have for any Nepenthes grower. This is Nepenthes Jamban and it has produced, uh, it's done some big leaf jumps since I've had it because it came as quite a small plant. It was only a, a, you know, a, a seedling and it, since then it's produced some really sort of like getting towards the more sort of stereotypical toilet shaped pictures. If I zoom in you'll be able to see that. There we go, centre of shot. Here is this little Nepenthes, and it's a little joy. It's such a twee little thing. We'll pop that little picture in there like that. And it looks like a little toilet. Uh, growing great guns. I don't think it likes the heat. Uh, it has seemed to have sort of gone into stasis. Like I say, average summers. Last year, it never got above 27. This year, we had record temperature of like 30, I don't know, 2 or something like that. 
Okay, these ones, we have two of the same species. These are my two Nepenthes Loei. Now these came from Dr. Vistorba in Germany ages ago. Um, 17, oh maybe not, no it's just when I repotted it last. Uh, I've, had, I've had them about two years, quite slow growing. Uh, and I would say the moss is prolific, it's becoming an issue. It just sort of grows over, flipping everything. I promise you, inside this pot, there is a Nepenthes uh, and it is growing quite well. Uh, this guy here has done some enormous leaf jumps, huge great big leaf jumps, and it's starting to produce some very attractive pictures with the typical spiky low eye, uh, well, the, the spikes on the underside of it. If I zoom in, I will try and show you. There they are. Hopefully you can see them there on that beautiful picture that's becoming more and more bell-shaped as it matures. And this is the one that uh, eats the feces of a tropical rainforest shrew uh, and it produces incredible uppers that look a little bit like a toilet again. So yeah, growing beautifully, just it's more of a, more of a battle to control the moss with those guys because uh, it seems to grow faster than the plants. So most species, well certainly this species I would find, say was a slow growing Nepenthes. Here's a very cute little Nepenthes, apart from my little seedlings, this is a, uh, a highly prized um, but very miniature seedling. This is Nepenthes paloensis. this produces enormous pictures. Well not this, this is, produces pictures that are that big at the moment, tiddly tiddly little things. But it has the potential to grow into an absolute monster of a Nepenthes. If I zoom right in on it, hopefully you'll get the camera decides it wants to focus. There we go, it's done some nice big leaf jumps since I've had it. It's even produced a tiny picture. Like most of Penthes, as soon as I introduce it into the green, it goes, bloody hell, where the hell am I? And they sort of go into shock a little bit. Uh, but since then, it's really got over it, and it's improving in vigour. For example, this is Nepenthes glabrata. This was recently sent to me by my good friend, Dan Evans. Ah, Dan. We like Dan. Uh, he is affable and sends me lots of plants in return for plants that I send him. So, great guy. So when it turned up, it had a few little tiny pictures. It produces small pictures. Um, and they all sort of went Ugh, and died, which is fine. Uh, but, and it sort of, like many independents, it sort of went into shock. But since then, it started to produce new tiny pictures. And it's also produced these nice new leaves. And it's gone sort of like a, a rich sort of reddy colour, where it's probably getting a little bit too much light. So I've backed it off. Like I said, I've already put extra um, shake cloth up for this guy. So uh, it's doing all right. It's growing well. This is Nepenthes gymnophora. This has got fantastically amazing, super awesome pictures. This is another one that Dan Evans sent me uh, and it came and it went, oh my God, what is this new environment? I hate it. And then it did some massive leaf jumps and then some of these pictures died. And then this one went like this and it went all manky. And then it went, oh, I'm okay now and produced this sort of much larger, much more attractive uh, picture uh, with beautiful p purple speckled spots inside the uh, actual picture itself that you may or may not just be able to see. Uh, and since then it's obviously um, producing more and more pictures. There's another one on this side here, just here, which is starting to open as well. Okay, so that's about it for the Nepenthes. I thought we'd have a quick look at some of the good ones. I have a few others as well, which are doing sort of equally as well. But it's getting dark and I'm running out of battery and I thought you'd actually like to see this video rather than just looking at stuff that you, you clearly cannot see. So uh, thanks for coming along. Uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to my channel for more content coming your way soon. And if you feel like you're supporting this project, head on over to my Patreon and uh, join the inner circle of trust. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all again soon.